Hi. Welcome to our Thursday, July 16th uh, devotions uh, from my almost completely dismantled temporary worship area. No longer is there the Micah 6-8 plaque or the Uncle Louis cross. Uh, it's other than the nail holes in the wall. It's pretty much back to the way it was, which was basically an empty space uh, behind the couch. Uh, our living room has a weird shape or a size, so it's kind of just an empty spot. Uh, could make a little uh, reading area, but uh, hey, our devotion for today is from our uh, portals of prayer. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, I'd like to tell you a parable. Uh, I'm sort of modern day parable. It really didn't happen, I don't think. It's an urban legend. But there was a man that uh, was the uh, uh, rail railroad switchman uh, and two tracks going over the Mississippi River at Quincy, Illinois. Uh, the uh, one day he brought his son to work with him, his uh, uh, five or six year old son, uh, his only son. And uh, he went to get a candy bar and a vending machine in the switch room and noticed that the son had uh, walked down on the tracks, took the stairs and got down on the tracks. Uh, and as he looked, he saw the uh, he saw the uh, coal train coming from the uh, west, uh, not on the same track as his son, uh, but uh, his son was playing an empty track. Uh, but then he looked over across the river, and coming from Chicago was the California Zephyr on the same track as the coal train. California Zephyr with 153 people, 153 passengers in it. He had no time to go down and save his son if he didn't switch the tracks and run the uh, California Zephyr off to the different track. There would be a head-on collision and all the people would die. But if he switched the California Zephyr to the other track, it would hit his son. He didn't have time to think. He closed his eyes. He pulled the lever. And the people in the California Zephyr and the uh, crew members of both trains were saved as they passed by one another on different tracks. As the California Zephyr passed the switch uh, room windows, the man could see that there were people in there eating and drinking, reading newspapers and books, carrying on life as if nothing happened, as if nothing, as if their lives were not endangered. unaware, unaware of the sacrifice that had been made. That's a terrible story, right? I agree, it's horrible. I don't think it's true, I'm glad it's not. But maybe it is true. Because almost 2,000 years ago, a father had to choose to sacrifice his only son in order to save the lives of the entire world. In Jesus' baptism, uh, which is highlighted in today's devotion, it says, And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Yes, God's only Son, Jesus Christ. And he was well pleased in him. Thirty years later, that same Jesus hung on a cross. And at that moment, at the moment of his death, he took on all the sin of the world, 
the sin that had happened before him, the sin in his time, and the sin from eternity, your sin and my sin, from the day we're born to the day we die. And thus, and thus he received the punishment for those sins, for the sins of you and I. And his fa our father, his father looked down in horror, in grief. But he knew, he knew that he had to do this. He had to sacrifice his son for the life of the world. Yet just like the passengers on that California Zephyr, few people noticed what Jesus had done. Other than the biblical account, there's just a couple of historians, Josephus, who is a, I think a fourth century historian, has a little sentence about during the reign of Tiberius Caesar, there was a Jesus a Galilean, who was a popular leader, who was crucified for insurrection. Yes, the world went on, went on sinning, went on acting as if nothing happened. Unaware of the sacrifice that was made for them. You and I have no excuse. We know what happened. And yet, sometimes don't we go through life as if nothing had happened. If nothing, as if nothing had changed. As if in our baptism into Christ's death that our sins were forgiven. that we should live a different life, that we should live a holy life. Thanks be to Jesus for his sacrifice and for the sacrifice of a loving father, his father in heaven. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I've done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. We have... Uh, council meeting tonight so I'll probably put this on our Facebook before the council meeting so that'll be on there a little early uh, tomorrow there will be no devotions Friday I will take a day of rest and then Saturday morning we'll have coffee right at 12 and it'll be a short coffee about 10 minutes as I need to get ready for Arlene Hansen's funeral but I do want to have coffee with each and every one of you uh, on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. So be there or be square, as they say. God loves you, and so do I.